Hey there, Ryan here, and in this video, you're going to learn how to create a priority matrix in Google Sheets. Now, if you've never seen a priority matrix before, it's a tool that organizes your tasks based on impact and effort. If you have a task with a high payoff, but it requires low effort, it's placed in the top left quadrant. High impact, high effort tasks are placed in the top right, low impact, low effort are placed in the bottom left, and low impact, high effort are placed in the bottom right. Basically, this tool helps you quickly identify which tasks to focus on and which to ignore. And this spreadsheet makes things super easy by automatically putting the tasks where they need to go. Plus, you can check off each task once you finish it. And so, if you want to learn how to make this in Google Sheets, then stick with me. And as always, we will be starting with the blank Google Sheets spreadsheet. Now, the first thing that you want to do is get rid of the rows and columns that you don't need. So, select columns M through Z, right click on the column headers, and delete. Then click here in the name box, type in 31 colon 1000, and press enter. This action selects all of those rows, and now you can delete them by right clicking on the row headers and select delete. Next, select rows 1 through 30. Right click, resize rows, change the height to 30, and click OK. Select column A, right click, resize column, change the width to 50, and click OK. Now select column B, right click, resize column, change the width to 250, and click OK. Select columns F and G, then hold Control and also select column I. Then right click, resize columns, change the width to 30, and click OK. Next, select column H, hold Control, and also select column J. Right click, resize columns, change the width to 300, and click OK. Finally, click here to select all of the cells and change the vertical alignment to middle. Awesome, that does it for the worksheet structure. Now we're going to set up the formatting. Start by selecting the range B2 through D2, increase the font size to 12, bold the font, click the fill color button, and select the fill color light gray 1. Then select the range B3 through D22, click the fill color button, and select the fill color light gray 3. Next, select the range G2 through H2, increase the font size to 12, bold the font, and add the fill color light gray 3. Also, click this button to merge the cells into one and change the horizontal alignment to center. You can then copy this merged cell, select cell I2, and paste. Now, select the range F3 through F12, increase the font size to 12, bold the font, and add the fill color a light gray 3. Then click this button to merge the cells into one and change the horizontal alignment to center. Then click this button and change the text direction to rotate up. You can then copy this merged cell, select F13, and paste. Now select the range G3 through H12, click on the fill color button, and click this plus icon to add a new custom color. Then for the hex code, enter E6 F9 FF and click OK. Next, select the range I3 through J12, click the fill color button, and click this plus icon to add a new custom color. Enter the hex code FFFFE6 and click OK. 
Now select the range G13 through H22. Click the Fill Color button. Click the plus icon and enter the hex code FFE6E6 and click OK. And then select I13 through J22. Click the Fill Color button. Click the plus icon and enter the hex code E6FFEE and click OK. And of course, if you don't like these colors, you can always move them around or select your own colors. Either way, your next step is to add in some borders. So begin by selecting the range B2 through D22. Click the borders button here. Change the border color to white and click this to apply borders around all cells. Next, Select the top two merged cells, click the Borders button, increase the border thickness by one, and apply all borders. Then select the two merged cells on the left side, click the Borders button, and apply all borders. Finally, select G3 through H12, click the Borders button, and then click this to only apply borders on the outside of the selected range. Then do the exact same thing for the yellow range, then the red range, and the green range. You can now turn off the grid lines by going to View, Show, and Uncheck Grid Lines. Awesome. Now let's add in the headings. Select B2 and type in task, then impact, and then effort. Now select the bottom left merged cell and type in low impact. Then above, type in high impact. And then in G2, type in low effort. And in I2, type in high effort. At this point, select cell B3 and type in task 1, and then copy this down using the fill handle. Having these sample tasks is going to help us validate that our formulas are working correctly. And once you have them, your next step is to create the drop down menus for the impact and effort columns. So select the range C3 through D22 and go to Data, Data Validation. In the panel on the right, click on Add Rule, and under Criteria, make sure that you have Dropdown selected. Then, for the two options, type in Low and High. Then, under Advanced Options, choose the arrow style and click on Done. You can now easily assign high and low to your sample tasks like so. That does it for the task list, so now let's focus on the matrix. First, we will add in some checkboxes. So select the range G3 through G22 and go to Insert, Checkbox. Then select I3 through I23 and go to Insert, Checkbox. Awesome. Now we will add the formulas that will place the tasks in the correct quadrant automatically. So start by selecting cell H3 and enter the following formula. Equals filter function B3 through B22 next argument C3 through C22 equals quote high quote next argument d3 through d22 equals quote low quote close parentheses and press enter this formula uses the filter function to grab only those tasks that have an impact of high and an effort of low and this is exactly what you want. And from here, select cell H3 
and then in the formula bar, select the formula text and copy it. Now select cell J3, click in the formula bar, and paste the formula text. Then in the formula itself, change the low to high and press enter. Select cell H13 next, place your cursor in the formula bar, and paste the formula text. Change the high to low this time, and press enter. Then select cell J13, place your cursor in the formula bar, and paste the formula text. Change the high to low, and the low to high, and press enter. Awesome, that completes all of your formulas. So for the final touch of the spreadsheet, we're going to add in some conditional formatting that will automatically strike out any tasks that have been marked as done. So go ahead and select the range H3 through H12, then go to Format, Conditional Formatting, and then where it says Apply to Range, click the Select Data Range button right here. Then click on Add Another Range, and select H13 through H22, then add another range, select J3 through J12, add one more range, and select J13 through J22, and click OK. Now, under Format Cells If, select Custom Formula Is, and for the formula, enter equals G3 equals true. You can then set the fill color to none, set the font color to none, and click the strike through button here. You then click done, and you are finished with your priority matrix in Google Sheets. I hope you had fun, and be sure to like this video if you learned something new. Aside from that, thanks for watching, and I will see you again in the next Spreadsheet Life video.